Every year, more than 200,000 visitors come to see the castle and its ruins. The carvings at the doors are very interesting. They show scenes from the Old and New Testament. Next to it, another valuable exhibit, a clock from West Friesland. A tiger made of bronze guards the dining hall with neo-Renaissance furniture. A late Gothic fireplace belongs to the precious furnishing. This vase from China belongs to Raveni's collections, a fashion in his days. Raveni bought what was considered precious in his days. Today the furniture collected by him is even more valuable. Poker walk on the ceiling and the stairs leading up to Raveni's private rooms. Renaissance chairs with the coats of arms of former dynasties remind us of the culinary delights of bygone ages. Cupboards with magnificent carvings belong to the dining hall too. Julius Rostov, a well-known interior designer in his times, tastefully furnished the rooms of the castle. The carvings at the furniture show scenes from the Old and New Testament. The large sideboard is quite remarkable. It is five meters high and four and a half meters wide. In its shelves we can see China ware from Delft, valuable pieces made in famous manufactories. The sideboard was designed after the model of a Renaissance gable. Heated by a fireplace, the ladies' apartment of the castle furnished in a particularly comfortable way. Above a baroque chest with marquetry, an English lady's portrait painted by Sir Peter Lilly. The paintings date from the 17th and 18th century. The ladies' apartment is furnished with furniture in the style of the early 18th century. The table and the chairs are made after the technique of André Boulle, the famous cabinet maker at Louis XIV's court. The ceiling is Gothic. In the castle of Cochem, we can find, in a historicizing way, nearly all architectural styles, a Dutch secretary with a walnut veneer, valuable stained glass windows in the alcove of the ladies' apartment. The original glass panes were destroyed during the Second World War. The new ones were modeled on the originals. The Romanesque room is connected with the ladies' apartment. The wood carvings show disciples and signs of the zodiac, a valuable tall boy. The stove made in Nuremberg has remained in all its splendor. Behind it, tiles from the Dutch city of Delft. Tall boys with pastoral motifs also decorate the room connecting the keep to the rooms erected on the edge of the rock. A mermaid lamp from the 17th century, a mascot of these days. The ceiling of the turret that contains the clock of the castle. The hunter's rooms decorated with trophies from the local area. Weapons remind us of the owner's passion for hunting. Of course, they back local animals. A royal bag, an immense 12 panther. Tankers made of pewter, the large ones hold between 5 and 6 liters, the daily ration of a man, the small ones about 3 liters, the amount of wine a woman drank every day. 
six beautiful carved tall boys can be seen in the castle. One of them in the hunter's room, surrounded by trophies like this royal boar. An oak door with Gothic ornamental mountings gives access to the knight's hall. The knight's hall was decorated in the Gothic, or better, neo-Gothic style. A painting from Titian's school shows the Greek goddess Danae. Collecting large faces was in the taste of ravenous days. This one was made in the Japanese style. Cupboards upon which dishes were arranged and tasted were called buffet. One of the spectacular pieces in the Knight's Hall is the large open fireplace at the north wall. In front of it, a cradle for wood, a masterpiece made by one of Ravenna's craftsmen. The room is crowded by two lions, wearing helmets with closed visors. In their paws, they hold the coat of arms of the Count Palatines and the Archbishops of Trier. Two neo-Gothic banks complete valuable furnishing. During the guided tour, we can see what a majestic impression the Knight's Hall makes on us. The wooden pillars bear the vault, which was overarched by a stucco ceiling in 1905. The Raveny family had given this valuable labor to the city of Cochem when they had to leave the castle. A gambling table decorates this room as well. The clock in the room was artistically made in the Renaissance. Finally, there is a bust showing the last lord of the castle, Louis Raveny. The painting above the Rape of the Sabine Women is from Peter Paul Rubens' school. Who is the old man in the portrait? We don't know it anymore. In the alcove, once again a mermaid lamp as it was made in the 19th century. The balustrade in the armory is completely made in the Renaissance style. Visitors are often offered the cup of welcome out of this drinking horn. A painting shows the embarkation of the Queen of Saba. Armors belong to the inventory too, but they are 16th century imitations. The 16th century executioner's sword, however, is authentic. The beautiful cupboard also dates from this time. It is the most valuable item in the castle. The ceiling of the chapel is a rarity. It's constructed like the hull of an old ceiling boat. The tabernacle belongs to the sacred things in the chapel. The windows were destroyed as a result of enemy action during the Second World War and were restored by a regional craftsman after all pictures. They show the evangelists Matthew and Mark. It was a hard but nice work to restore this chapel. Here, marriages and festival dinners will be organized. Many official delegations will be expected. The castle is also worth a visit outside the special events. The mere view of Cochem is a good reason for the way up. Castle festivals always finish at a certain moment. The castle of Cochem is prepared for your visit all year long. You can always book medieval dinners. The Knights team in the castle welcomes every visitor and once a year the city expresses its pleasure about the visitors from all over the world 
with magnificent fireworks.